Hey everyone, how's it going today? Coach Alvarez here, back at you another episode of Coffee with Coach. Hope you're up doing well. Got the mind in the right place. If not, let's put it in the right place. So uh, today, before I head up to the academy, getting in a little workout, teach and train some jujitsu, I wanted to um, share some thoughts on uh, <clears throat> belt and stripe promotions. Um, we have promotions this coming weekend. It's a big weekend for um, for our team, for a lot of our students. Uh, we got students been putting in work all year long, you know, year after year, month after month. Uh, <clears throat> so it's that time of the year to kind of move some individuals forward and and uh, and get them to that next level. So <clears throat> in regards to that, you know, every now and then I'll have um, students or other people's students or people ask me or I'll just kind of see a, um, a pattern in, in some people that don't really uh believe in their skills believe in themselves and they'll try to <clears throat> dodge the promotions that the instructor or coach is trying to give them and for those individuals out there that are having that kind of mindset um this video is for you guys okay is to kind of help you rewire your thinking all right now let me get it Put this out there if you're an individual that's not consistent you're letting life get in the way of your jiu-jitsu and you're you know on the mats here and there back and forth taking time off coming back taking time off one of those individuals then yeah absolutely you know it's going to take you longer to get to that next stripe or next to that next belt that next rank or whatever because you're just not there all right but for those individuals that are training Week in and week out. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, uh, individuals that are that don't have a job and they don't have or they have all the free time in the world to train every day, twice a day, because I have students like that. OK, I don't know how they do it, but they do it. But they they're there all the time. And, you know, big ups to those individuals that have that much free time to do that, <clears throat> because I know when I was going through white through black belt. I was working at General Motors. I didn't have that kind of free time. I got four days in, okay, and that was it. Four classes, and that was it. But I made those four classes every week. Uh, and if I could, I'd get, I'd get a little bit more. But those are the individuals that I'm referring to and talking to, the ones that have uh, a job, family, you know, school, uh, just whatever, and you're just not able to come to class like everyone else. It's like an average thing for most people they're getting about three classes in per week, maybe four, like, like me, you know, at that time, family, job, you know, other things going on. And so that's the average from what I've seen over the years of, uh, of, um, having my own academy again, 13 years going on 14 pretty soon. That's pretty much the average most people can make three days a week, you know, or, or maybe an, an extra one. Okay. So for those individuals, if you're there, wherever you're training at, okay, whether it's my academy, or somewhere else, and you're putting in the work, okay, and you're doing the work, like you're not fake rolling, you're not talking during the round, you're not an individual that's, uh, man, you're just doing the work, all right, you know, you know, if you're not doing it, and if you are, okay, those, those there's, there's students out there that just, they're there to socialize, and they're really not there to work, okay, I'm not talking to those people, I'm talking to the ones that are actually really trying, okay? And for those individuals, <clears throat> in my perspective as a coach, obviously, and I've said this to my students, all I say it to them all the time, each individual is graded differently. I promote each individual on an individual basis. I can't compare one student to another student as far as like technique, skill-wise, and all this other stuff. Um, Everyone has different athletic, uh, athletic abilities or don't have athletic abilities, uh, has a different IQ for jiu-jitsu, don't really have an IQ for jiu-jitsu, different strengths, don't have strength, um, and the list goes on. So you have to base that, uh, the promotions on their individual efforts. When they come into the academy and they bow on those mats, how hard are they really trying, okay? And that's what I go off of. Okay. Yes, you should be graded on are you uh, you know your your skill level and all this other stuff. But for the main 
the main core ingredient is the effort, okay, is the effort, because it is what it is, and that was a, a, a thing I had with, uh, with some previous students that used to train with me, they would question um, my promotion sometimes, because these individuals were all into jiu-jitsu, like, they were just, like, day and night jiu-jitsu guys, they were really, really good, they were uh, very talented, high IQ for jiu-jitsu, um, they just got it, and they were good at it. And I, if I was, uh, I mentioned this to my class today, if I was to grade my students on my best students, off of my absolute best students that are just totally in jiu-jitsu, don't really care about anything else, and they're really high IQ, and they're really strong, and they got talent, and they just get it, I wouldn't be able to promote most of my students because I'm, I'm, I'm grading them off of my top tier students. And it would just be impossible to move anyone forward because those individuals, no matter how hard they try, even if I had some, some of my other students that don't have the high IQ with Jiu Jitsu or don't have those athletic abilities or those strengths, no matter how hard they try, they will never be those individuals that were questioning me about promotions. It's like, I'll hear that <clears throat> in other motivational or inspirational videos. Like, like I like football, okay? I like basketball. And I liked it when I was a kid. No matter how hard I try um, or how good I was at basketball. I mean, I'm not six foot. I'm not seven foot. I'm like a little over five foot. Like, I'm not going to be an NBA superstar and make it into the NBA. I mean, every now and then, I think back in the day, he had like Spud Webb. He could dunk and he was, you know, he was a little dude. But how many little dudes do you really have in the NBA that that really, really love jiu-jitsu and really try and give it all they got? They're just not going to make it to the NBA, all right? They've so got individuals that are going to give everything they got, and they're not going to make it to the NFL, you know, the PJ Tour or whatever because they're just – it's just what it is. You just weren't blessed with those capabilities to make it to that level. So the same applies to jiu-jitsu. You just have some individuals that just won't be other individuals. So you can't grade everyone off of your top tier students. Those top tier students don't see through the same lens as the coaches do, obviously. All right. So if you try to dodge your promotions, okay, because I've had students that say, oh, I'm, I'm you know, uh, ooh, I'm glad I got this blue belt. You know, I'm going to be here for three years. Why? The recommendation or the 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 uh, the guidelines is like a like a two year minimum, okay. And if you have someone that's putting in the work and they're there, they're not skipping no classes. They're not letting life get in the way. They're not letting family get in the way, kids get in the way, work get in the way. They're there week in and week out, trying, getting tapped, getting frustrated, going through the ups and downs, peaks and valleys, like you're supposed to, like everyone else does. For me, you know, they're asking questions. When it's time, okay, when that time comes up, it's time to it's time to go. It's time to move forward. You need to be tested. You need to be pushed. You need to go into that next arena and see what else you can do there, okay? Because you have some individuals, like I said, that have made those comments, like, oh, I want to be a three-year blue belt. Um, if you're a three-year blue belt and you've been training, like I, like I just described, is that going to make you feel good that you're smashing a blue belt that just got their blue belt or maybe a two-year blue belt? Like, you should be where the where the purple belts are. You should be testing yourself in that arena versus, like, trying to have an ego, you know, and, and make yourself feel good because you are surpassed the rank that you're supposed to be at, but you're still there, and you just want to feel good and smash on some people that are now moving up into your into your area there, you know, that's some people, they have that, that kind of ego. It's like someone that I just like, if I don't give someone a blue belt and they're still a white belt and they're a white belt for three years, well, you're supposed to go and win a white belt division, man. Like how good can you feel if you win a white belt division and you're been trained for three years consistently? Like, it doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. Maybe 20 years ago, 15 years ago, maybe, because we lived in a different era without cell phones, without the resources. We have Flow Grappling, you got Instagram, YouTube, you have your iPhone that you can... We live in a different area, era where the, the information is like instantly to our hands whenever we feel like it. 
And for me coming up, I had to wait for the grappling magazine to come out. I had to wait for the jujitsu magazine to come out. I had to order VHS tapes and put them in a VCR and watch uh, instructionals or watch matches that way. The world championships just happened the other day. And you can literally go to Flow Grappling and watch all the matches that you want. I had to wait till Budo Videos put all those together, made a DVD, and then put them out. And then I had to put them into the CD player and then like, or DVD player and watch those things. That's different. We live in a different time. I understand that. So like, I'm not gonna hold my students back for 10, 12 years. Like you would hear those things um, back 15, 20 years ago because we just live in a different time. Um, the jujitsu is just advanced and it's just the way it is. So now again, it'll take you 10, 12 years to get a jujitsu black belt. If you're just letting life get in the way and you're just back and forth and you're just coming and going, you take breaks and you come back. Yeah, absolutely. I'm referring to the ones that don't take breaks to the ones that are there. And maybe, maybe what it really is, is they're comparing themselves to the upper belt, to, to, to someone else that maybe they look up to, or they want their jiu-jitsu to be like a teammate of theirs and their teammate just gets it. And they're like, man, they're so good. And I wish I could be, I hear those kind of things, but it's just one of those things like, um, what is it? Uh, comparison is the thief of all joy. I think that's what it is. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Comparison is the thief of all joy in everything in life. Like if you compare yourself to what people have on Instagram and Facebook that you don't have, you'll feel bad. Oh, I wish I had that. I guess I'm not good enough to have that. I wish I had this. I guess I'm not good enough to have that. And so you start putting yourself down and you don't believe that you could probably go to this place and go to that place or have these things or have that thing or this house or this car or wherever. Uh, whatever, because you're comparing yourself to someone else, okay? And if you continue to do that, you will continue to hold yourself back and and just do a disservice to yourself, okay? You'll never feel ready. I've only had a few students that have been like, you know, I'll ask them, like, you ready? You ready to go to the next level? And yeah, coach, I'm ready. Like, I'm ready. They're not asking me for it, okay? I just ask them if they're ready. And mentally, they feel ready, okay? I felt like that. I knew there was a lot of work still that had to be done, but I was ready to go. And if my coach said I was ready to go, then man, it was ready to go. Let's go see what's up at the next level. Let's go test ourselves. And that's what I did. And I'm not saying that you have to do that. But at each belt, as soon as I got a belt, I found the next tournament, which was a lot harder back then. Okay, you're talking 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006. It was not like it was today where like there's just like a there's tournaments everywhere okay and as soon as i got a belt i would drive to austin or drive to houston and go to san wherever to go test that belt because i wanted to go see what i needed to work on what's next what's next at this next level that i need to start working on asap okay and so i was never had the mindset of like man coach i don't want that i want to be a four-year brown belt I want to be a three-year purple belt. Like, hold me back. Hold me back. And in certain cases, you might get that because let's say for some of my students, okay, let's say you're 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 a blue belt and you're getting ready to be purple belt, right? But Worlds or Pans is like three months away, okay? Well, we're going to wait to Pans, you know? We're going to wait to Pans and, 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 you know, give you a one more shot, or maybe you didn't even get a shot because something happened, maybe you got injured or maybe life got in the way and you didn't do, you weren't able to do the other pans. And pans and worlds is three months away. Then we're gonna go ahead and, and go get that at that belt level. And then we'll go pr promote, win, lose, or draw, we're gonna like get promoted after that tournament because it's just right around the corner, so why not? All right, let's go give it a shot. But it's not gonna be like, well, if you don't win this pans, well, you're not going to get promoted till next year. If you then you if you don't win that pans, then I'm going to hold you back until you keep winning it. Okay, that's that's not how it works. All right, and again, keep holding you back until you do win it. I mean, you could be five years from now. Then how good do you feel being a five year white belt winning a a, a a white belt tournament just to get a gold medal that that you should have probably would have should have had you know three years ago? Um, it just wasn't your time. 
if that's the case, okay? And sometimes it's just like that. It's just, just wasn't your day, it wasn't your time. Uh, I think it's, uh, it might be Kyle Terra. No, it wasn't Kyle Terra. I think it's Felipe Costa. Felipe Costa's legendary jiu-jitsu black belt. And I had the honor of competing against him in Brazil and Sao Paulo uh, at the Brazilian Nationals. And I'm pretty sure it was his, his story that he says he never won a major championship until black belt. He never won a major championship until black belt. And then you have other people that have won like blue belt worlds, purple belt worlds, brown belt worlds, and then like go and win worlds their first year at black belt. Literally, there's black belts that just got their black belts. And this was their first year competing at black belt and they won it. Man, it's just, you know, like it's just for those individuals, man. It was just, that's just how it works for people. And unfortunately, it doesn't work like that for everyone. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't go up in rank. That doesn't mean that you don't have, uh, you're not good enough to go to the next level. You should go to the next level, okay? You put in the time, you're there all the time, you're getting crushed, you're getting smashed, you're getting frustrated, you're, you're doing the work. You never really feel um, good about your jiu-jitsu when that happens, but you're growing, you're developing. And if you have a good attitude and you're helping your teammates out, and you're not getting all pouty and you're not crying and whining and complaining about stuff. And you're not, you're, you're not, I, I had an episode about it the other day, I think, you know, throwing your belt, throwing your mouthpiece, throwing temper tantrums, slamming them, like hitting the mat, you know, acting all childish and stuff like that. Then, then you should go to the next rank. Now, if you're doing those kind of things then maybe yeah, maybe you should wait because maybe you aren't ready you know, mature wise, okay? Your mature level just isn't there and you should probably just be held back and the coach will probably do that. But I'm talking about students that aren't doing any of those things, but they're doing all the right things, but inside they're feeling like, you know what? Yeah, it's my time, but I don't, I don't, uh, you hear this like time serve belt thing. Man, it is what it is. You know, like, like it's time to go. It's time to challenge yourself. It's time to step up to the plate, go to the next level and go see what's at the next level. And it's going to be the same thing, man. Like I got, you're going to continue to ask questions. You continue, you're going to continue to struggle. You're going to have bad days and good days and you're going to go and nothing changes at each belt. It get it like, it's still hard. You just get better at it. You have a better understanding and a better grip on things, but you're still going to struggle. You're still going to deal with the things that you were dealing with white belt and blue belt and stuff like that because there's always going to be someone on the mat better than you for sure or you're just going to have a bad day and you're just going to get crushed but you don't let that deter you from or discourage you from going to that next level all right so um i won't make this too long we'll just leave it there i gotta get up to the school but um with promotions coming up this weekend for us uh i think it's really important to get out there because i know there's there has to be there's, there always is individuals that just don't I just don't feel like I'm ready. If I see you there and you've been training, you've been putting in the work and you've been doing the right things and I see the progression on my end that I need to see and the effort is there, then we're going to move forward because there's no, I, we, we just can't, like if I was to do that, I basically would never promote anyone because everyone gets into their feelings and their emotions on how they feel about things. We got to move forward. We got to step up. Let's go to the next level and then go get after it. Go get some and see what's at that on the other side of that thing. All right. You've been there. You've been putting in the work. Let's go get it. All right. And then for those individuals that haven't been there, get there. All right. Get to class. Do the right things. Eat the right foods. Exercise. Like watch some videos. Like do some studying. Ask some questions. You know, uh, maybe ask your coach or ask me if I am your coach. Coach, what else? And I have those students and I love those students. Those are like the best students. Coach, what else do, what, what do you see? What do I need to work on? What do you, what is this? What are that? And I can help guide them that way. And they have a clearer path on the way to that next level. Um, because if you don't know, you just don't know, right? So find out, all right? So um, dodging your belt promotion is lame. It's weak. It's a weak mindset, okay? Those individuals or those students really just kind of irk me because it's like, they're just, they're just being weak. They're allowing their weakness to come out of them instead of the strong side of them. Like one of the, one student, you know, has a brown belt and he's like, man, I'm ready. Let's go coach, let's do it. Like I 
I felt that come out of him. Like I felt that self-confidence and that strength come out of this individual. That got me fired up versus, I don't know, coach, I don't know if I'm ready. I don't know if I'm this. I want to be there for another year. It, you know, that just, it looks weak. It sounds weak. It is weak. And it's like, man, test yourself. You've been there. You've been putting in the work. Don't expect too much to change. Like I said, as far as the struggles go, those things are going to happen. And you're going to continue to deal with those things. But that's where the that's where your character shows. That's where your strength comes out. Like That's where you show the younger, lower belts. Hey, look, you know, I'm dealing with these things just like you are. And this is how we handle those things. These are how we handle those bad days, you know. And then that's it. All right, guys. So, again... Stop dodging your belt promotions, your strike promotions, get to the mat, get to class and, you know, just continue to work. It will never end. OK, I'm going on 14 years as a black belt and man, you know, I know I'm better than I was 14 years ago, but the struggles haven't changed. I still deal with struggles. I still do. I battle my students day in and day out. And I got to deal with things all the time. And I'm always figuring out things, trying to answer new things. It just never, never ends. And I accepted that a long time ago and I embraced it. And so like, I'm, I'm comfortable with it. I understand how it works. All right. I'm getting ready to go to that next level soon. It's going to be the same thing. All right. All right, guys, have a great day. We'll catch you on the next one. We'll see you.